just before commercial, we were discussing uh, that you did issue a report to all the premiers uh, with some suggestions. You know, you're not in power, but if you were in a position of power right now, what would you implement right away? I know you mentioned you would lock down the LTCs and, and their caregivers. Um, you know, what else can be implemented immediately? And is it too late? The first thing that, uh, if I was working for a premier, the first thing I would strongly recommend is that we issue a written plan to the public for our jurisdiction. That would take, uh, at this point, I, it's unconscionable that it's not already written, but it, it would take a, a matter of a week to bring together all the experts, run a inclusive process and produce a written plan to the public through the media. The second thing, co concurrently, would be to immediately quarantine our long-term care homes in each of our province of Canada and the staff that support them. The third thing would be to do a systematic review of the critical infrastructure across every one of those tubes I discussed mm -hmm. and make sure we're not gonna get any more surprises. Then I would ensure that we remove the campaign of fear that is being perpetrated every night on the news by the premiers and their MOHs through the media and give a new message of confidence. We've increased the capacity of our hospitals. I don't think they have, but we dang well should have. And that's one of right. those uh, uh, critical infrastructure reviews that I, I highlighted in the second. But we need to change the narrative because we can never spend $400 billion again to lock perfectly healthy people in their homes for fear of catching a virus, which 99.9% .9 recover from under the age of 60. So I appreciate uh, that, again, you've put these suggestions forward, and I'm glad that you answered if you were in charge what you would do. It doesn't seem like anyone's listening. And I, you know, as a mother, as, as a wife, as a, as a Canadian, I start feeling a little downcast and wondering, well, is there ever any end in sight to this? We, you said you mentioned a third wave. I didn't even know that we should be anticipating a third wave this October. I started getting anxiety from this. You're right. There's a lot of fear because I think that there's no end in sight to this. Uh, is there an end in sight? There's an end in sight to COVID if the current vaccine is good against all the new strains that are emerging. And that's another thing that I don't understand. We, viruses constantly shift and change. This is nothing new. Why do you get a flu vaccine every year? Because there's a new strain comes out every year and COVID's going to be no different. So if we react again, it, there's a viral infection curve. It's the same in Canada. People claim that lockdown works. But if you look at March and April, the viral infection rate drops up every year, and by the middle of May, it's gone flat. Guess when it goes back up again? Middle of October. And that's when all of a sudden the MOH has said we're seeing, seeing um, uh, exponential growth. That's what happens with viral infections every single right. year. You want to know when it peaks? About the second to third week of January, it levels off, goes down a bit, stays constant, and then starts to drop in April. So they're going to claim victory from these lockdowns when they see that peak happen, but that's just mother nature. So we're going to, yes, is there going to be a third wave? The third wave won't be a wave if the vaccines are actually good and they get out in time before the middle of October. So yes, we, we can stop this one, but what about the shift? What about the next one? We can't do this again. This, this is completely wrong. And you've seen the medical officer of health pre-retired from Ontario say exactly that. This right. was never envisioned. This is not the right response. And that's the medical point of view. I'm giving you the emergency management point of view. So, I mean, in the 30 seconds we have left, you know, as a laywoman, what can I do? I mean, you're an expert. If they're not listening to you, what can I do? Who's going to listen to me? The only thing we can do as the Canadian public is overwhelm our elected officials. You have to tell them you don't believe what they're doing is right and that you want to see something either like I've said, like the medical officers, you need to see a process, you want a written plan, right. and you want to see our seniors protected now.